Hi all, this is the second and final part to the vacuum testing valve seats video. Hope you like it. I make the box from 3mm aluminium plate because that's what I had laying around. Okay, the lid is finished. Better give it to Luna, the helping dog. She can check if it's square. Check the right side, then the left side. Yeah, all good. Can you trust a dog? Apparently, yes. To work out what pump to use, I just looked at the specs of a professional version. This is a PEG Vacutest. It has a flow rate of 11.6 litres per minute and 850 millibars maximum vacuum. Just as a comparison to the large pump that I used in episode 1, it flowed 3 cubic feet per minute, which is 85 litres per minute. And there's the problem with using those large capacity pumps right there. So I found this Chinese pump. It's uh, 12 volts and it's uh, 80 kilopascals, minus 80 kilopascals, which is uh, the same as 80 millibars. And the other one's 85 millibars, so that's close enough. And it's 12 liters a minute, and the other one is 11.6 liters a minute. It's a flimsy looking thing, but might just work. This is the finished base. Uh, it uses a 12 volt transformer to run the pump and a solenoid operated valve so I can seal the vacuum off and see how fast it leaks up. That's the same as you would have seen in the first video where I used the ball valve for that purpose. So this is where everything goes pear shaped. You can see the gauge in the foreground is the old one I used on the previous in the previous video and the uh, vacuum hose is open and the gauge is reading zero which is correct but the one that's fitted into the box is uh, is almost halfway on the gauge so that gauge is faulty it's, it's new and um, supposed to be made in Spain but um, it's faulty so I'm just going to work with the one I've left on the hose. Actually, I put it back on the hose, but I'm going to keep working with that one. And I'll try and get a new gauge, one that works for the box. The other issue here is this pump is not very consistent. <clears throat> so each time you run it, the vacuum will vary by about one inch of mercury so sometimes it's going to show 21 sometimes 22 sometimes as much as 23 so th that's another problem but I think that the pump is is it's cheap and nasty the other problem it has is the input and output barbs on the pump uh, plastic and very small and it's difficult to get the hoses to seal on them so that's another problem and something I'm not impressed with. I'll look for a quality pump somewhere. Must be able to get one. So what I'm going to do is each time I do a test, I'll just close off the vacuum and see what the maximum vacuum shows on the gauge.
this this is a good thing to do anyway even if you had a good well functioning pump you should you should always test the maximum vacuum uh, anyway as a matter of course just using this thing so what I'm going to do now is uh, go ahead and show the two ports that I tested in the first video except we're going to be using uh, this vacuum pump so it's about 22 right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to read the gauge now, yeah, okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two point one. Okay. Twenty-two point four. Now I'm switching the green button. Go over to the back to the gauge. And going back. Mm -hmm. Let's leak up to 21 now. Now, down to 20. So, time to recap here. This is the good cylinder with the, the one valve that I lapped, and we compared it. We're comparing it to what we did last time. Now, last time with the high capacity pump, it just maxed out. And when I closed the valve, it slowly leaked, leaked up. And in this case, with this one, exactly the same thing. It maxed out, maximum vacuum. And you can see when I close the valve, we we'll switch the green button there. That flips the solenoid and the vacuum is now closed so it again slowly leaks up the next thing to do is have a look at cylinder number one that's the one that was leaking in the first video and so let's get on to that so you can see my thumbs on the end yeah it's 22.5 okay we're gonna go in here and read the gauge mm -hmm. You've got to show which cylinder it's on. Yeah, that one. Okay. And it's woeful, right? Okay. What is it, like 16 or something? 16. Hmm. Oh. <clears throat> there you go. Now what? Okay. So... Uh, that's right. Really, just switch the green button. Just watch, watch the green button, and you'll come back to the gauge. Right? Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Back to the gauge. Dropping like a stone. Uh oh. Okay. Here is the money shot. You can see that this cylinder is leaking. The sealed vacuum was twenty-two and a half inches of mercury, and on this cylinder it is sixteen. The end. It's dead. Now, if you recall from the first video where I used a pump that was way too powerful, the gauge was maxed out on this cylinder and you could hear the bubbling from the pump. A total failure. And yet there are sharks selling them on eBay as kits and even people making YouTube videos demonstrating them. What can you say? All right, so what do, we, what do I make of this? I think that anything less than maximum vacuum when using this tool is not acceptable. So I expect I should be able to pull maximum vacuum when I use this. Um, the leak up feature is somewhat useful. And once I finish all the 16 valves in this head, I'll have a better feel for that. But overall, I think um, the range of the pump uh, has, has demonstrated that uh, this is usable, this is good at matching those numbers from the PEG unit um, seems to work fine, so happy with that. Next trick, In, after the first video, after I posted the first episode of this, uh, someone commented asking about 
how does it compare to um, you know putting fuel down the port and seeing checking for leaks that way and uh, so that's what we're going to do we're going to make it have a look at that and see how it looks and and I must remind you uh, these these are techniques these are tools you got to get used to them you got to know them so you know you can make things work for you anyway let's get on with this uh, my son was helping me in the previous videos and this one I did by myself so that I'm moving the camera all over the place sorry about the terrible video all right I'm going to we're going to look at uh, cylinder number one if you recall from the first video um, that's the cylinder that was leaking anyway uh, these valves are held in by springs the other ones on the other cylinder are not so uh, and they were held in by springs in the first video as well so first things first we'll uh, put some gasoline down the port and then we have we're in the process of waiting so here we are waiting you can see there's no nothing coming through yet so you might do this test and you think wow that's good that one's good to go great yeah, well, we'll wait some more, shall we? And here I'm just going to show uh, a view down the port. It takes me a while to get it focused. Sorry about that. It's definitely got gasoline in there that can leak down the port. All right, you can wait. see we're starting to see a bit of a leak there. See the yellow? Hang on, we'll get in focus eventually. There you go. See the yellow? And you see the yellow color coming on the seat. That gives you an idea. There's a very slow leak. You know, if you were if you were doing this kind of testing, you probably wouldn't notice. You'd probably put the liquid. There's the other one leaking. See, you'd probably put the liquid in the port and think, yeah, it's great. Um, but actually, it's not. So I just let. And you can see it's getting a bit larger now. So I'm being very picky here, you know, obviously. But such a small capacity engine and such a small combustion chamber, it, these things matter. If you've got a 350 V8, something like this with a large combustion chamber, you know, these tiny leaks like this, probably not significant for you. But if you've got a 250 cc four cylinder with a combustion chamber of five cc's, everything counts. And so then it becomes more important. I'm just going to use a little piece of paper towel here, and and uh, it does show up. It does show up. The wet wetness is showing on the paper towel, and it's that slight, slight yellow tinge there. So here is a picture of me doing the gasoline test on the lap valve, holding it in with my thumb. I gave up waiting because it was obviously pointless. Okay, let's wrap this video up. My two cents. Get yourself a genuine back tester or make one like mine using a similar spec but better quality pump. As for what to consider is a good result, I don't think you have to be as crazy as me. But be wary of some of the experts making YouTube videos about this. Some of them are shockers. I think the professional ones, like the, the, the people that supply the pressure, professional vacuum testers, I'm quite sure they quote a figure for an acceptable margin, what an acceptable margin is. Could be two inches of mercury, something like that. You should be able to find that out, and if anyone does please post it in the comments, comments section. It'll help other people. Um, anyway, thanks for your time, and I hope this video was useful.